Let's ride, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. Ba-doom, ba-doom. Let's ride, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. The road's awaiting. So I really must say, well, let's ride, sweetheart. Let's ride. <laughs> Just for you, Oscar, nice. taking it back old school. <laughs> you used to come with stuff like prepared to do stuff like that. Matt used to come with poems, and I'm not dogging you guys. I remember that. You guys time. used to come with. I said, "Come." <sighs> nobody comes with. Cre- All that, right, that's okay. The, you you're gotta, right. You got to come with stuff like you're that. Right. I, will. I love it. I will. <laughs> Imagine us listening to that in ten years. That's I forgot. You know what I mean? That's hilarious. Those are great things, and I yeah. of course yeah. archive those. Me no. and Matt are good about archiving stuff like that. So. <laughs> There was like a six month period where we were coming up with all kinds of crazy crap like that at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, yeah and the, po- the poems and all yeah, that other shit yeah, too. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> all right. Okay. So, um, yeah, so that's the new challenge to all law abiding biker guests is come up, come with something fun and creative. We got so much fun stuff like that. So here you go. Close your eyes, both of you. Close your eyes and just listen. And then I'm going to ask you a question. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> Laurel. Laurel, 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 Laurel. Okay, open your eyes. What do you hear, Oscar? Someone saying Laurel and some clicking and some kid in the background. So Laurel, what do you hear? Laurel, clicking. Really? Something in the background. Wow. So have you guys seen this, um, this, uh, that video that is basically it's a, a what do you call it gone viral have you guys been I, I privy to any of this i've no. heard of it i heard about it but did I've you hear about actually it? listen to so this it. is yeah. laurel versus yanny yanny versus laurel and let me go to here. supposedly they're both being in the video right but no they are no i could have played that to 10 different <laughs> people and a lot of people will hear yanny oh wow same video okay that's the thing. And it all has to do with, um, if you guys haven't seen this, the audience, look it up on YouTube, Yanny versus Laurel. It was created. And so it's the weird how the human ear, there's done some studies on mm-hmm. why this is. I will tell you this, which is freaky. It actually freaked me out the other night. So my daughter played this for me like two weeks ago on her phone. And it has to do with speakers. It has to do with the environment. It has to do with your age and different, sound waves it's it's complicated hmm. so she played it two weeks ago me and my wife i swear to god same video and there's multiple out there there's the original and then a lot of people have done that where it click where they just play it over and over okay it's the same audio files but she played it for me and she was and it was yanny i mean 100 percent. me and my wife are like it says yanny over and over how could anybody hear laurel in that that's retarded really? okay Wow. It was Yanny Yanny. So I encourage you to go back in two weeks and listen to it on different things huh. or different environments. Hmm. It freaked me out the other night because I was preparing this. I had it in the show notes. I was like, oh, that's a fun thing to see what the audience hears. Is it the yeah. same voice though? Same voice. Oh, okay. Nothing changed. It's that. No people. If, if I brought 10 <clears throat> different people in here, some people would sit with those earphones on. They would hear Yanny. There are people in the audience that will not hear Laurel. They will hear Yanny. Okay. A hundred percent. And they will swear that you could never hear Laurel out of that. So it made you know, viral. It went viral. So two weeks ago, Yanny, 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 me and my wife and I like, it doesn't, I don't even, there's not even an L in there. Like, how would you hear that? Mm -hmm. So I was preparing show notes because I was going to do this little game for the audience as it's interesting. It has nothing to do with motorcycles, but it's interesting. (laughs) That's what we do here. It's my my show. I can do what the fuck I want. We we get off topic all the time. It's it's pretty much my show. If you don't like it, you know, whatever. (laughs) Um, No, our audience likes stuff like this. So last night I'm preparing the notes and I'm out here by myself and uh, I, I play it to make sure it's cute. I'm like, Laurel. Laurel. Yeah. Oh, like, damn it. I'm like, motherfucker. That, it <laughs> freaks you out. You know, you're like, is that yeah. a different video? So I went back and got pulled like 10 videos that do this. Still the same I thing. I can't huh? hear Yanny anymore. I tried it. I even oh. went, this is how freaked I was. I don't know why I was freaked, but it's, <laughs> it's lonely out here. Oh, yeah. I run inside. I get my daughter's phone. It's cheaper speakers. It's an older iPod touch. Cue it on that Laurel. Same thing. Grab my wife's phone. Different speakers in the studio where I edit video inside the house. <laughs> Laurel. I'm like, motherfucker, how did I ever? And I would have huh. swore to you two weeks ago it was Yanny. So I, have fun with it. Um, I'll have to check it but, out again. Yeah. That's like those pictures, yeah. you know, you see. Laurel. Laurel. Let's cue this. Let's yep. go. Uh, I keep Laurel. hearing Laurel. Yeah. Yep. We're going to kill some time here. Yanny versus Laurel. 
let's find a different video and see. So and this, this video kind of explains it, which is interesting. Um, look for the ones. A lot of people try to redo it to get like uh, views. You know what I mean? They're like, yeah. they just copy it to get some ad sense. But so 3.3, here we go. Here's original. So that's what they say. A lot of people say it's original, but that this guy just kept playing this over. So these are the ones I listened to two weeks ago. Laurel. Nope. Still Laurel. 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 Is that freaky or what? I heard Yanny, dude. I heard Yanny. How could you hear Yanny? I'm t- I, I can't. I-, I said that two weeks ago. How can you hear Laurel? Like there was no L in it. Anyways. Yeah. I'll be curious to see what the audience um maybe when we do our now next- i'm gonna have to keep going back to this shit the correct oh dude, dude you, we are screwed forever yeah Damn let's it. see that's 1.6 let's just try this the gift that keeps one more one and, more right and then keep a tally on how many times it changes back and forth <laughs> yes which one i'm actually hearing let's try it again <clears throat> i swear to god these are the videos i watched it was yanny i don't know if it had to do with the weather it's so weird and watch the ones where they talk about it laurel see laurel nothing i can do to hear yanny laurel. Huh. Laurel. And before there's nothing I could do to hear Laura. And that was two weeks ago. So I don't know. The, watch the, the videos where the guys actually, you know, like this guy right here. Um, he <coughs> explains it a little bit. Uh, where is it? This one is pretty good. ASAP science, 44 million views. Whoa. It's only three minutes. Do you want to listen to it? Yeah, let's check it out. We haven't even started the podcast. The people, you know, yeah. this is fun stuff. This it is, is great fun. stuff. Yeah. We're just bikers yeah. sitting here that- on a Sunday afternoon for you guys on the Sabbath day. Drinking some cold beer. Sinning, because we're not supposed to be working on the Sabbath. We're not. We're, this is not work. You're right. right. You're right. This is we're a total friends. entertainment. True. Family. Good. Family. Good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So here's the explanation video for all you out there. And I know everybody that's listening in podcast format right now is going to YouTube. It's <laughs> yeah. fun. It's right. stupid, yeah. stupidly yeah. viral, but there's some science behind it. Actually, uh, this kind of stuff, it's like the picture you look at, what yeah. do you see, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The right. ears... C- the ears will lie. Yes. Is that eyes will lie. We right. know that as law enforcement officers, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. right? Like people Absolutely. tell us they see certain things. It's funny because it's not 100% mm-hmm. and right. we can be tricked. You hear Yanny? Laurel. Laurel. Or Laurel. 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 A recent Twitter poll found that 47% of people hear Yanny while 53% hear Laurel. Clearly, this has created an internet argument that is dividing the nation. So what is the science behind the madness? One of the first aspects is priming. If you were to play this clip without providing the option of Yanny or Laurel, you may have heard neither of these words, but by reading... And I didn't prime you guys, but did you read the notes and see Yanny versus Laurel? Yes. Did you know what I was doing when I had you close your eyes? No. Okay. No, I didn't know it. So, was no so I didn't prime either of you, no, right. which is what I wanted to do. I didn't want you to see. I was hoping you didn't. So yeah, good. Okay. Them, you're primed to hear one or the other. Secondly, when you speak, you are producing sound waves, which propagate through the air. This is a visual depiction of the sound waves of the original Yanny slash Laurel recording created by Brad Story, a professor of speech, language, and hearing. Here is the depiction of him saying Laurel. You can see that the acoustic features are very similar. Here is a depiction of him saying Yanny. The acoustic features are also similar. So the words Yanny and Laurel audibly are more similar than you might think. Whether you're listening on a laptop, phone, or headphones will influence what you hear based on sound quality. But what if you are listening through the same device, but you hear different things with someone next to you? It might have to do with the age of your ears. The sounds in Yanny play at a higher frequency than the sounds in Laurel. As we age, our ears are less able to hear higher frequencies. So if you are hearing Yanny, you might have younger ears. Luckily, with the help of the internet, we can hear both. Brilliant Twitter user at XXV posted audio of the pitch brought both down and up. When you listen to it brought down 30%, you will hear Yanny. Yanny. Oh, yeah. Isn't that weird? But when you listen to it with the pitch brought up 30%, you will likely hear Laurel. 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 Oh, Your dude. brain has of course so they much just stimulus at all times. That. I'm freaking out, man. <laughs> I'm fucking freaking out but here, still, Michael. Damn, I'm freaking bro. freaking out. All right, here we I go. I see dead people. <laughs> that it uses existing information and precise neurological pathways to focus its attention. This is why at a loud party, you can listen to your friend beside you, but pop your attention into another convo if need be. Similarly, your brain is unconsciously choosing which frequencies in the recording to pay attention to. 
So, what is the final answer? If you heard Laurel, you are correct. The original recording is saying Laurel, but with higher frequencies overlaid, creating ambiguity. Love learning about amazing and interesting. Hmm. Pretty that's, interesting. That's huh? pretty cool. It is cool. I don't know why I find stuff like that uh, very fascinating. So, yeah. You sort there of you have go. an egg-shaped head that's... Maybe. Uh, in Comic-Con and stuff. Maybe, but I do know this. <laughs> Oh yeah, once you've had Rick Rack, you'll never go back to Ultimate Motorcycle Luggage Rack Solution. Forget those messy straps and bungee cords. Go strapless, Michael, with a Rick Rack quick attach luggage system and quality bag. Head over to lawabidingbiker.com forward slash store. Get hooked up right freaking now. Hey, Bikeaholics, Zero 3D has a wide variety of innovative products for your Harley Davidson motorcycle. Affordable chrome lighting and comfort products. These guys ride Mm-hmm. Support riders just like you. Head over to lawabidingbiker.com forward slash store and check out our full line of Zero 3D products. Best of all, by buying any of those products in our store, of course, you are supporting this very platform to make sure we keep heading on down the road. What do you say we do this? Mm, feel it. Yeah. Feel it, Michael. Feeling it. Feel it. Oh, smiling on the radio doesn't really... You're not live. They yet. can't see this one. Not live, bro. I totally blew it. Totally blew it. Welcome back, you freaking bikeaholics. This is the podcast for the motorcycle majority, the big MM, also known as the motorcycle majority. Ninety-nine percent. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> yes, I'm already, not the only oh, one. You said okay. Oh, oh wow. here we go. Here we go. Oh, <laughs> Screwed up already, <laughs> dude. Yep. The nerves. I should have had more beer. Yeah. Here, here we go for Michael. <laughs> <laughs> just all right, dude. Fail. Hey, everybody does it. Yeah. These guys still do it. I still do it all the time. That's yeah. why everybody doesn't skip through our interest because you never know what you're going to get. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'm too busy looking at the screen instead of listening to you. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, uh, I still do that. Like yes. going to tell yeah. me what to say. That's right. Yeah, right. <laughs> this is ad lib, bro. Large oh, yeah. and in charge of the motorcycle scene more than any time in history. By listening to this very podcast, you are part of what we call... The Biker Revolution. There you go, Oscar. Here's one for Oscar. I just pointed at him. This is a shit show already. I'm taking a and nap you're over here. Him. I was not. I was agreeing with him. I was oh. like, oh, I'm going to have an epic fail soon. It's cool, though. I do have just one question for you before we get started. <laughs> we fucked that up. Man. <laughs> what are you waiting for, Bikeaholics? Mount up. Let us take you. On a wild ass ride. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank God. You need a little oh, more. We need more lead sakes. time for this. More lead time oh. and then, uh, maybe cue cards. That was <laughs> fucking horrible. That was bad. That's why you never know what you're going to get at the Law Abiding Biker <laughs> podcast. You never know how we're going to start it. You never know. You may get Yanny versus Laurel up front and then an intro, and you may get a good intro or a fucked up intro. You just <laughs> Don't know. Welcome back. Ryan Erlacher here, your host of the Law Abiding Biker Podcast, and your take two, Michael. And High your tech redneck. <laughs> nice. No, dude. blow it up here, bro. Over oh, here. Oh, boy. See, I just effed up. It's the wrong oh, cue, dude. Wow, dude. We can only go up from there here. You go. Yeah, we're <laughs> we're done. Let's just shut it down. <laughs> start over. Right, right. Though. Mm. <laughs> All right. Right up front. We are just here on a Sunday afternoon, the Sabbath day. Um, keeping it real for you guys. We are relaxing. We're talking biker stuff and other stuff. Very happy to have Michael Clark in the studio right here. Patron member, uh, become a good friend. He's from Tacoma, Washington area, which is about two hours, a little more than that. What, two and a half you wrote in this morning. Welcome, Michael. It was about two hours. About two hours. Depending on traffic. Depending on traffic Jeez. and how much he's throttling down. <laughs> yeah. Well, I left pretty early, so there was no traffic. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And no rain. That was nice. Oh, wow. Yeah. If For those of you who don't know, Tacoma's in the um, greater wet side of the state yes, of Washington. The greater, yes. Yeah, it's yes. wet. Real mm-hmm. wet over there. Yes, it is. And uh, so I'm, well, let's just start there because uh, we're just BSing here. Um, let's just introduce you up front. I don't have a song for you. You will. Yet, <laughs> yeah, I figure that we'll, we'll figure that out in time. Yeah. yeah, but let me give you a little background on Michael, and then I'm going to let him give a bigger background about what it's about. But this is his first time on the mic. This is a recorded uh, podcast. We didn't do this one live. He's uh, what you probably found us a little over a year ago, and because he's close, and because he's a full time Leo law enforcement officer at an unspecified location, like all of us. But uh, yeah, uh, he he uh, found us, and then he's also. Uh, 
a part of the Sworn Few Motorcycle Club, which is what we're all uh, a part of here at Law Abiding Biker Media for the most part, is uh, the Sworn Few uh, Law Enforcement Only Motorcycle Club. And he's interested in that. Um, looking at uh, uh, membership at this point, um, we'll leave that at that. And uh, and got to know us and has been, he comes over, he literally rode over here this morning to do a two uh, bagger podcast. We're going to do one recorded. The next one will be live patron member only event. But here he is, and he's got to be a part of the new studio. And being we are in the new studio right now, he never had to record in the old studio. No. So he gets it all fresh and new. Um, but he does know our background, and he has been back to episode one. Horrible um, in my daughter's closet. Um, <laughs> all that. It's horrible. Well, That's I, how you learn. You just put yourself I, out there and you go. Yeah, but I wouldn't say that it was horrible. Well, oh, thanks. That's nice of you, dude. It's very nice of you. Um, but anyways, Michael, so here he is. And, uh, so thank you. Thank you for making the trek over here and getting a day ride in and, uh, just being part of law abiding biker media. What do you, whatever you feel like telling the audience, how did you, uh, this is what I'm always curious about. Why don't you answer this question? How did you uh, originally find us in okay. number one law abiding biker media and, or was it sworn few MC and also part two prong of that question? What made you make the leap? Because I'm always interested in having patron members in the studio. How did you make the leap to go? Yeah, that's that's I'm going to pay those guys because I I want to support them financially. Because you know, honestly speaking, although we have a big patron membership, it's less than ten percent of the audience. We have a huge audience, and yeah. I always wonder what makes it so a guy goes. You know, those guys deserve to be financially supported for what they're doing. So go ahead. Yeah. No, I was just doing. Uh prior to, to the bike that I have now, which is a 2014 uh, Electric Glide Ultra Classic. Uh, prior to owning that, I was just doing some research on Harley and Indian and, and different bikes and stuff. And I had a Yamaha uh, V-Star at the time. And uh, I was just doing some research and came across an oil change video that you guys had done and uh, saw that. And then I just started looking back at all the other videos and things that you guys had put out about maintenance and and product uh reviews and and that kind of stuff and i was like okay you know so it just it was uh to go back on previous a previous podcast you guys talked about was this uh mysterious uh thing to do with harley davidson's right they're they're these mysterious (laughs) creatures that you can't work on right mystical unicorns yeah yeah, it's the they're they're complicated they leak oil everywhere and blah 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 you know all the same old shit that everybody says right um so then i I was just doing some research and and it was it was time for an upgrade for for a motorcycle and um i just came across the the video that you guys put out and 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 a lot of the other ones and uh then i went and bought my bike and i was doing the oil change and wanting to do some service and stuff like that on it and um that was it you know and and uh I think I I think I became a patron almost immediately, like that day that I did a service on my bike. Really? Yeah. What made you make the um, uh, unpack that a little more? Like, because well, you know, to, just, to well, part with, just like for the for all uh, most of us, it just it saved me a shit ton of money. Right. See, that's interesting. So it's fair to say, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you know, when we started patron <clears throat> and we started this. Where community, we actually did it first couple of years. We didn't even have patron. We were, it was like videos, r- r- ratty donations here and there mm-hmm. um, before we really got involved. But I will say that I think that most people, we didn't even have benefits at first when you signed up as a patron. No, you just, that's, you did yeah. what you did. Hey, I want to, and our benefits I feel like are okay. Um, but I don't think that um, I, I don't think that our core audience signs up for benefits. They would sign up either way because they realize the value they're getting without benefits. The benefits to them and and to you maybe was, hey, you guys put out and work your ass off yeah. a- along with a full-time Leo job yeah. and you're putting out content that nobody else is putting out, helping the biker community. Right. I want to support, that's enough benefit for me, right? Yeah. Well, and that and that was another thing that you, the more research I did, then I, I'd never even heard of the sworn few. mm Never even heard of you guys. I've been Leo on the West side for 11 years. Didn't even know you guys existed. Right. And uh, then once that piece of the puzzle came together and 
I knew what you guys dealt with, right? Right. Because we all deal with the same shit. Right. The the weird schedules and shift work and oh, yeah, balance yeah, yeah. and family life and just the job and then any extracurricular stuff that we do. And then you guys are doing this on top of all that. Nice. See, I, I, didn't, that, I was done. That, that That's what did it for me. Wow. You know? See, I forget about that. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Being a Leo, you're like, how the fuck do those guys do that? I don't know, most, I, of, most of our audience I, doesn't know how we do it. I don't know I, how I, don't, I do it. I don't know how you do it. Honestly, right. I don't. Here on a Sunday. Yeah. You know, on my two days off, I worked yesterday till one in the morning, setting up the studio, getting mm-hmm. ready live, getting all this shit ready, making sure everything's dialed in so I don't have any problems this morning. And then here yeah. I am. We're going to spend from one to five, you know, basically four hours on the mics. Um, and then that- then we got to, Matt's got to edit it. I got to do show, show notes. You know, I had to do yeah. research. I spent three hours putting notes together. So yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it's a lot. Let's be honest though. It's the badass co-hosts that really draw people It, it really is. And I, I mean, that first it. video I made, oh, fuck. And I uh, got at least <laughs> four or five extra patrons just because I was in it. Right, yeah. And then the ones with Lurch Definitely. and then Rick. Right. And Rob B. And I do. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I just thought I'd throw that out there. Of course. And I do appreciate Oscar being here on a Sunday. This was a last minute thing. And that's kind of how we roll. Yeah. Uh, excuse me. I'm leaving, um, you know, here uh, to go on a cross country <sighs> motorcycle trip. And I have to have podcasts in the bucket yeah. because just because I'm leaving for nine days doesn't mean lab stops. And so I last minute, um, me and Oscar, which we're going to talk about, it is our main topic today at yeah, some yeah. point. Um, I was at police escort, motorcycle escort school with Oscar. And I was like, dude, I, this Sunday's looking good. Saturday or Sunday work better for you. Could you possibly get on a mic? And he stepped up to the plate and I appreciate yeah. it so much. Cause I don't, I, I have to rely on these guys. I can't, you know, and yeah. the, cl- the club and the, the guys that are on the mics, you know, I have like, you know, in our groups, you know, like 15, 20 guys. And yeah. now it's hard to get one mm-hmm. just because of schedules, yeah, you know, it's hard. And, and I tried Chewy and he's working today. You know, I try to get people that haven't been on for a while. I try to right. filter them in and I love having Oscar. And then, so Michael, you stepped up to the plate. So thank you. Yeah, You're a part you of that group now. Anytime. That's how I put it out on yeah. our, on our closed group. Me is, Hey, whoever wants to take a mic, I usually try to get one other guy. We can always do it with two. Yeah. And then I try to filter in a third. I, 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 I nail down one guy. And then I tried to do a third. Yeah, so shit, I'm happy to be here. I got a ride, a nice ride in on the way over. And hell yeah, I'm drinking Voodoo Ranger. Yeah, I might drink my I Voodoo have Ranger. Have one of those. I'm gonna turn the mic over to Mike. That's fine. <laughs> we're we're doing good. Um, no, and I thank you for that information. Um, uh, it's it's always interesting, but I I do I want to get to our main subject. I can ramble, but I, I know I just like to share behind the scenes um, information with the audience about kind of how we operate and what we are. But like I said, now we have benefits, which I do wanted to provide benefits, but. I really think that the benefits are already there. You know, now well, we have that, private Facebook group. We have access. You have to be a mid-level patron or higher to get uh, access to our live right. YouTube and chat events. And then top tier, you get access to all those premium videos. It, it does give even more right. than what we're already doing. Yeah. Um, you know, just a, a benefit. But anyways, yeah. Thanks for that insight. Yeah. Did I ask, not ask anything that you want to divulge? No, I think we're, uh, I think we're good. Okay. Well, I appreciate you. So there we go. Welcome. Now you guys know Michael, we don't have a nickname. We don't have a song for him yet. That is, uh, definitely forthcoming (laughs) and, uh, we'll we'll see what, see, see what we can, uh, come up with there. But, uh, talking about patrons, they are the reason that this show exists right now. Michael's one of those patrons. And uh, why don't you thank some of these guys there, Michael? All right. Leonard Long of Indio, California, who's a top tier Thomas Taz Massey of Kennewick, Washington. One hour away. Yeah, one hour. Charles Jackson of Phoenixville, Pennsylvania, top tier as well. Shane Peck of Brandon, Florida, top tier. James Payne of Strath Keller, Victoria, Australia. Mm, Shout out Australia. Mm -hmm. Fosters, Australian for beer. All right, it's terrible. Christopher Keener of Bristow, (laughs) Virginia. Go ahead, Michael. Uh, Bruce Marple of Jacksonville, Florida, top tier. Kim Smith of Stanton, Kentucky, top tier. Stanton's about 30 miles from where I grew up in Kentucky. T. Lee Brown of Mound City, Missouri. Oscar, how do they sign up for Patreon? I'm going to... This is going to be funny shit right here. Go on their (laughs) interweb. (laughs) Hey, you highlighted the blue stuff. See how he... That's not right. This isn't on the notes. This is just something I say everything. But you got to go to Law Biting Biker forward slash Pete. Fuck. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> Just look. I got to go back in the shop. Forward slash Patreon? Is that what it is? <laughs> the, nice, dude. I was Nicely there, but the done. forward slash thing threw me off. That's right. Lawbindingbiker.com forward slash Patreon. Get signed up. That's right. There are benefits. Uh, you can pledge a certain amount per piece of content. No worries to you because you can put a monthly cap. That's right. You can get benefits like t-shirts and stickers. You can get access to our private Facebook group and our live chat and video events up to top tier access to our premium for purchase videos up on request and we thank you for sponsoring this show so i had to redeem myself yeah you did a good that was a good pickup here let's get a little fist <laughs> bump in the middle pickup, dude it was it was nice it just Sorry. goes to show that you can still be experienced and a total failure at the same time right exactly <laughs> I'm, I'm, my learning has Correct. been done for many months i knew <laughs> i knew i was putting you on the spot there because that's my my rant a lot of the stuff that i say now you realize it's not on the notes yeah. You know, I just have right. it in my, I just, right. I just yeah. ramble. Um, yeah. The notes are just kind of a guideline. They're bullet points. All right. One new free video that we want to mention to you guys, and then we'll get into our main topic, which is going to be all about mechanic um, servicing my new 2018 police Harley, a one K service. Um, and not just a police oh. bike, which is no difference. And we've talked about this, Oscar. What do they actually do? Yeah. I spent some time. I have access to our mechanics I get you guys the actual information because it is an email we get when people purchase our service videos. We get some funny emails sometimes from people, mm -hmm. again, uh, piggybacking off what you said, Michael, that these are some mysterious thing. And Harley Davidson checks 3,000 bolts. Oh, yeah. Actually, oh, yeah. 2,999 sure specific sure. torque specifications. <laughs> they have, a, sure they they have a fucking checklist and they go through everything every little thing and it's a it's like a 10 hour service i mean it's a harley and the shit that they have to do these mechanics i mean you can't do it yourself because i mean you are you checking anyways <laughs> see i'm gonna rant and you know what harley's uses uniform fuck this is i'm gonna do a I rant look, i have not been drinking i'm just here well that's why you're talking normal because you're not drinking <laughs> Okay, you, need the, to, you need to I get need your to. level up. All right. Okay. I'll your, be back in a minute. Your blood sugar's low. <laughs> <laughs> Alcohol's low. Yeah, right. The yeah. Harley uses unicorn poo for uh, fastener, uh, you know, like Loctite. And yeah, so you, yeah. Yeah. Red or blue? Uh, it's actually both. It's unicorn poo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So oh, if yeah, you, yeah, if you over or under it's torque it, oh man, the whole bike melts and then. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> that is going to be our main topic. Now I'm going to get on a rant um, in, in, in true fashion. Um, yeah. I'll get on a rant. So new free video uh, that I, we released. It is how to install, uh, it's all an install and review of the new Zero 3D Latitude LED taillight and license plate holder on a Harley Davidson. If you guys have not seen these, um, you got to see them. Uh, let me pull it up here real quick for you guys. Uh, have you seen these? Did you see the video? You may not have seen the video. I released so many videos, but here they are. So we released this um, super nice look and it uh, basically replaces all of your rear stock bulky Hardy Davidson lighting with the chrome bar and the two bullet signals. It's a nice curved LED run turn break. It has an attached license plate holder, black or chrome that curves. So it curves your license plate and contours the rear of your bike. It is sexy as a mother. It has an LED. It's all LED. It has an LED white light that shines the white light as required by federal law onto your license plate. Those things um, are bad ass. I'm telling you, yeah, I'm promoting it. It is in our store. We have them in stock, ready to ship to you. Check it out because you'll want to watch the review and install video. Once you see it, your jaw is going to drop. You literally will um, drool. They're amazing. I will put it in the show notes, lawabidingbiker.com forward slash whatever episode this number is or lawabidingbiker.com forward slash zero hyphen latitude, hyphen LED, hyphen tail, hyphen light. Remember that. Okay. <laughs> Can but we get a be, forward slash? I don't even know why I read that. Hyphen, um, hyphen, the, hyphen. We used to be able to be really simple back in the day. If you listen to the first episodes, it was like lawbindingbreaker.com forward slash zero latitude. We have so many, oh, I'm running products. out of URL. So it's just their long <laughs> lengthy ones like that. So I just put it in the show notes or you can go to the lawbinding biker store and search in the search bar. Just type in latitude, L-A-T-I-T-U-D-E, latitude. It will bring you to it. And uh, right now they're two ninety nine ninety five. That's a, I, I get it. But what you're getting for that is amazing. You're looking at 10 uh, up to 14 up to current. So 2010 model, and then we have black or chrome, and then we have 14 and up models. It's all in there in the variables in the drop down below the price where well, you that, can pick which one you want. It That price is so actually sexy. 
So I spent like yeah, right, six hundred bucks or something to upgrade on my thirteen all all LEDs in the rear. Are so three hundred three hundred bucks is a good price. Had I known yeah. that now, I'd be all over that. You're right, it yeah. is. I don't think about that, but I get it's an it's a more expensive product for a lot but what you're getting is it, they're awesome and you it, know that's so that sexy is, and you know that that light is bright as they're bright hell. Yes. it is we're running them on several bikes now here at law abiding biker media um, we put them on lurch's bike in the video we put it on um big daddy kane who runs the store down there put it on his bike um and we filmed it again it's you guys our videos speak for themselves watch the video um it shows you everything you need to know on how to install it, and i show how it looks um it's amazing, amazing yeah. product. And that's, so that's a brand new free video that we put out. Of course, yes, it is promoting a product from us, but, uh, that, uh, keeps the lights on around here and keeps the AC running in the background. Right well, now. let's face it. How many products have we bought where we've stumbled through? Like no one will, even the, the product maker doesn't tell you how to put it on. Mm-hmm. Right. That's what the aftermarket, uh, indie mechanics and stuff make their money on. They figure it out and then they, Oh, we'll put it right. on. Yeah. Make so it having easy. The video, the video to go with the product is awesome because, yeah, you, you pay money for the product, but then you can do it yourself. So you save another right. hundred bucks, not having to pay someone to put it on for you. Yep, totally. And you know, a lot of places aren't doing that. No, uh, no even Revzilla. Not. People talk about Revzilla, which the, we're an affiliate with Revzilla. They're a great company, but they show review videos, but they, they never show you how to put shit on. Stuff. They don't no. do anything, nope. right? No, anybody can review a product. Oh, here's look at our taillights. Buy this sure. and buy this. Yeah. Right. Here's Absolutely. a helmet. You know, but you don't actually install it. Yep. Well, and the cool part is you you can watch the install video first, and if you know a little bit about working on stuff you can decide ahead of time whether you oh that's not gonna be right for me or right hey that's great i can do that in my garage tomorrow right oh that's what the other side of my seat looks like in the plugs i'm gonna go look and see do i have those yeah, plugs yeah, my, right. can i yep. do this can i get you know get to it yeah you I don't agree. get that anywhere else i agree nicely said oscar thanks you bro you may you may have uh redeemed yourself no, maybe I don't a lot of folks see. just don't want to take their own stuff apart because they're so not used they to see, it they don't want to read paper instructions right, right. and then, right. but then for the product reviews and the installs and stuff that, that you guys do here, they see that you guys are doing it and go, Oh yeah. If they're doing it, I can do it. Right. Yes. Right. So that's, that's awesome. Yeah, it is. Good call. All right. One thing I want to clean up before we get into the main topic is, uh, uh, Oh, I had that down there. I do want to say, make sure this is new. If you guys are patrons, this is for you, Michael too. If you guys are patrons, out there, make sure that you go into your patron account when you get a chance and go to your settings. They're now incorporating, I have a thing where it incorporates your patron account with our YouTube account. What that does for you is you have to put your YouTube channel. If you have a Gmail account, you have a YouTube channel. Okay. If you sign up for a free Gmail account, anybody out there, or if you want to, or if you can comment on YouTube videos, you have a YouTube channel. Whether you People know it like, or not. I don't have a YouTube channel. You do have a YouTube channel. You just don't upload videos to it. You've created a YouTube channel if you're commenting on things. You just don't upload to your channel. Mm. So people don't realize that. So if you are commenting on YouTube videos, you have a channel. Find your channel under your Gmail account. Please plug that into the back end of your patron account. The reason is now, if you are a patron and you comment on our YouTube channel, which is extremely active, that will highlight your comments. I will know reading those that you get priority because you're a patron. I like to know who the paying patrons are on YouTube. And I don't know because they have ambiguous usernames sometimes on YouTube. And I don't know who that is. It would be really great to know, oh, well, that's a patron member because it's highlighted and it stands out to everybody else that you are a patron member in that thread. So if you guys can do that, just get in again, get into the back end of your Patreon, go to your settings, just enter the URL to your YouTube account and the rest is magic and it will happen for you um, behind the scenes. So here we go. I don't know what any of that means because that's yeah. the interweb, but it's cool. Right. It, we, it's, it's cool. That. I know. It is the interweb, yeah. dude. You mm-hmm. lost me at back end. Right. <laughs> oh, God. Here we go. Nicely done. Yes. First time on the mic and going to start zinging For, about oh, there. Yeah. Nicely Off-topic, done. That's what I'm talking about. Nicely done. Michael Clark must be the voodoo ranger. <laughs> Attaboy. <laughs> It'll do that to you. The old voodoo will get in you, dude. Imperial IPA is what we're drinking here on a Sunday afternoon. Delicious. If you wanted to know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Law-abiding biker provides uh-huh. nothing but the best for its guests. Mm-hmm. Some mm-hmm. IPAs. So let's go here. So this is the main topic, which we're going to start getting into. So recently, um, if you guys don't know, I have a uh, new, I've had it about at the time of this podcast, about three or three weeks or so. I have a new, uh, my police, uh, police motorcycle that I ride every day is a 2018 
uh, Harley Davidson Electric Glide, and it is has the new Milwaukee Eight. Now we've talked about this stuff in the past, Oscar and I, which is nice um, about our police. Um, Leo, uh, motorcycle officer backgrounds and what we do. Um, again, Michael can relate. He's in the Leo field too, but, um, the 2000, the police bikes guys are no different uh, as far as the Harley. It's just based on an electric glide. So when I talking about police bike in this episode, please don't say, oh, well, it's a police bike. This doesn't, this doesn't, uh, uh, matter to me. It does. It's the same bike guys. I'm just telling you it's a police bike, but it's the same exact frame. It's the same exact Milwaukee eight that you guys are running out there. The services are the same. They don't do anything special to a police bike. The only thing a police bike has on it, they add radios and lights and shit to it. Other yeah. than that, it has no special cornering, no special bearings, no special tires, no special anything. It has emergency lights, a computer in the trunk. They wire the fuck out of these things. Yes. You guys should see these things. I think I've posted some on Facebook and stuff of when it was getting wired up and there's just loads of wire shards mm-hmm. hanging out or wire. You if know, anyone strands. in Germany is listening to this, my BMW is very special. Mm. Okay. So don't let him fool you. It's funny talking about that <laughs> because or, or, uh, Oscar rides a BMW um, for his police bike now. And it's funny that, uh, you know, our channel, it, 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 great topic. Our channel, um, is very Harley centric. Right. It was because most of what we ride off duty, we've done some metric stuff. I would love to do more metric stuff. Being at the police conferences now where some people are riding BMWs, it's funny that BMW is behind Harley in this fact that a lot of people think all of a sudden, I started this channel like you talked about, Michael, because the mysterious, ooh, yeah. Harley's, uh. ooh, they're yeah. so you have to have right. a and BMW's got that terrible. going terrible. It, it is terrible. And if somebody out there yeah. wants to start a BMW channel, I'm not interested because I'm busy enough here. If you started a channel like I'm doing and no. you did it right and you did BMWs and take the mystery and oh, start yeah. tearing them motherfuckers apart. Because well, yeah, yeah. what you guys are paying for yes. services, they have a total Harley thing going, dude. And BMW is not mysterious. I guarantee I could work on that fucking they're, thing. They're the, it's a boxer twin. It, yeah. Right? And but you can only touch Do you it agree with special with me on German. This? No, 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 no. You have to have special German wrenches right. imported from North Korea. They're not SE. They're those. not metric. They're, <laughs> they're German right. wrenches. What would they be right. called? Yeah. They'd be called and German you gotta, wrenches. You got to get all the bolts guten tight. Oh, yeah. Guten tight. Guten yeah. tight. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> One for me. That is, uh, do you know BMWs are just German Harleys? Mm-hmm. And it is the exact same Thank bullshit. You. It is. It's so terrible. I'm, so we haven't talked about this, but that's mm-hmm. what I was seeing at these conferences. I'm like, Oh fuck! I'm just dreaming. I'm like, if I could quit my Leo job, which I don't want to right now, um, uh, you know, I could start full time and do a BMW too. Oh, yeah. I mean, and you, could, yeah, I could yeah. do the same. We could have a BMW podcast, and we could have a Harley, and you could do a separate YouTube channel. I mean, yep. I, yeah. if I'm giving somebody an idea out there, uh, I get part of the royalties if you start a successful <laughs> channel because I gave you the idea. I'm just too freaking busy right now. Yeah, am I? I'm on cue though. Oh yeah, that, dude. Like, I, so my lit up when I said that you're like, you're yeah, so oh, right. I, it's the, I had a it's little the German B, It's the German Harley, right? It is a yeah. German. I had a little oil leak. It wasn't an oil leak. Anyway, it's oh, what happens shit. in service. Not just Harley. Oh, oh yeah. it's a oil leak son yeah. of a bitch. Oh, metrics leak yeah. oil well, now and then. Yeah. Oh, well, shit. When they, oh. Well, they're not metric. They have their own special tools. <laughs> they right? are German, right? They're not metric. Right. It's when, not oil either. <laughs> and I went I went and looked. I got to top this thing off. I, got, I went and looked and I'm like, and then, oh, what is it? $40 a quart for BMW oh, oil. Oh, my God. Oh, God. God. I, really? I'm, it may have had some AMS oil put in it a little bit. Right. Forty dollars for a quart. I, I don't know. It was expensive, and it was in a really fancy freaking bottle with a certain grip on it, and it was ergonomically shaped. And I didn't even. Oh look, there was no God. price. Anytime there's no price listed, probably shouldn't buy it. Yeah, it's at least more than a lot of money that I make or whatever. It's ridiculous. That's Why would you do that? Oh, it can only take, and it's a weird oil spec. Yeah. Why would Germans do that? Oh my God. <laughs> but you is there a? Uh, oh yeah. See. This is a great conversation. This is nothing that we're going to, but it is part of what we're talking about. Um, Motorcycle. It's baby. great. It's, yeah, we're just talking motorcycles. We have show notes, guys. So we're trying to get to the service thing. Where are we at on time? Oh boy. Okay, we're doing good. We still got time. This will just go over an hour, which is typical. I don't just, even know why just we Just ignore my first comment. Just skip no, through, dude. It's fine. No, I don't. No, it's fine. It's great. I won't be butthurt. So yeah, that's anything. the thing right. about that I'm learning about BMWs. And we love all motorcycles here. We've told you guys that at Law Abiding Biker Media. We're just hardy centric because that's mostly what we ride off duty. But now it's nice because we have Oscar riding a metric on duty so we can talk a little bit more intelligently about it. Um, 
So is there a, with that said, so yeah, it's expensive. If you guys think Harley yeah. is mysterious, oh my God, the Germans got people bent over. They and, really uh, do. Good for them. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, if somebody starts a channel, I'm telling you. Uh, so it, with that in mind, I want to piggyback off that, um, the special oil and these special services with these special <laughs> wrenches. Is there an AMS oil conversion for it? You can run full, are they, is their oil synthetic? for the BMW. They make all kinds of, they don't make any oil. They have all kinds of BMW. You know, right. Any oil is, there's only like four major oil manufacturers. And then there's some like Amsoil, some blenders and stuff that are a little bit smaller, but so whoever makes BMWs oil for them, then repackages it with BMW, just like Harley does right. the same thing with their, with their screaming Eagle. Right. Exactly. Right? And this B- BMW motor rat oil or whatever. And it, it's just weird, but you, so, there is an Amsoil conversion. No, there's wow. not. So there's not, not an but you can put, but, it's a synthetic. It's synthetic. It, well, here's the thing. Are they all, not saying whether it's 30, 50 or no, what? no, no, that, that all oils come with either APA or a CEA specs or, or diesel specs. So it can be a, like a, for a, for a pickup truck, a gas pickup truck can be like SN, uh, Sam Nor, that's the newest spec. So, or JSO, which is the Japanese, oh shit, JSO, Japanese sports. No, I can't remember what JSO stands for, but anyway, it's the, it's the metric bike standard for oil. So you have, they all meet the same spec. So then you, if it's a little bit off, like BMW calls for a 540, which is weird, but you can put a 2050 So they tell it. you, okay, 540. So they, so they tell you it's, it's got to be API SN, JSO, MA2. So any oil that is API SN or JSO, MA2 is fine. Right. So synthetic. So there is an AMS oil. It doesn't have to do with synthetic. It has to do with the spec. It could be. But, okay. But my question, can you, it's, it's a synthetic oil that's in it, right? Uh, is there I, oil synthetic? I have no idea. Okay. But they make a synthetic oil and they make a, a semi sin. Okay. And then they make a regular dinosaur oil, so you, you know, don't, mineral oil. Okay. So basically what you're saying is I'm confused. I, I get kind of what you're saying. So I have a confused. BMW. <laughs> I have a BMW and I don't want to use the fucking BMW oil. What yeah. do I use? You can use any API. Thank you. SN or any, which is J- what you said. I just wasn't yeah. clicking or any JSO MA2 or any oil that meets those specs, whether it's synthetic, semi-synthetic Semi-synthetic, or gotcha. mineral oil. Yeah. And so I was like, so if well, somebody comes to you as an AMS oil yeah, dealer, which go, Oscar is, and, and they say, Hey, I have a BMW and I want, an, yeah. What are you going to give them? Um, it depends on the year and the make. How about yours? Um, <laughs> AMS oil hasn't updated the list yet. I put I you the, on the spot. I'm I sorry. used the 2050. I did. Okay. It calls for a 540, which is a weird spec. It's hard to find yeah. a JSO MA2 oil in 540 in the U S it's a European oil. But you can run a 2050 or an, or a 1550. It's not a big deal. Anyway. Okay. So you but, couldn't but the, use the, because Amsoil has their <laughs> metric. They do. Right. You can yeah. just use that. You could. Talking to your mic. Yep. Sorry. Yeah, Good. they could. They, have, they make a 1040 and a 1550 and a 2050 and a 1030. They don't make a 2050 metric. Any of them. They're all, they all meet spec. It's oh, just okay. a little bit heavier weight or lighter weight. Doesn't, it's fine. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. But it's another one of those things. No, like I'm Harley, it's you're BMW. educating me, right? Yeah, totally. Well, what is some special unicorn poo oil you, that you have to use? If you have, <laughs> and if you have the BMW, you have to yeah. you have to buy the full BMW suit. Yes, the BMW helmet. Yeah. Yes, and the BMW communication system for oh, your helmet. Yes, and, and, and I'm not dogging BMW guys because you Otherwise, can say the same works. about Harley. Mm-hmm. You get the guy that buys the Harley, the Harley jacket, the Harley pants, the Harley shops, the Harley boots, the Harley helmet, the Harley. Senna 20S, right? Mm-hmm. You see the same in the BMW industry. They both, it is huge. the German Harley, dude. It and they got really it is. down. Because yeah. I've seen guys do yep. it. I've and there's seen. huge BMW conferences, just like the hog rallies and stuff. Yeah. Not so much for the, for the other metric bikes, mm-hmm. but BMW and Harley have very similar do you marketing eat, do strategies. You, do you drink tea and eat creep? crepes? Crep, that's fucking French. Mm-hmm. I don't <laughs> know. Where do you? <laughs> I don't know. And I'm not... The, I drink please. a load of shitload of beer and I eat <laughs> right. a lot of sauerkraut, bro. Right. Come on. And, and you BMW writers that listen to this, I make jokes. I also tease Harley riders. So yeah. oh, we're by fair far. game. I yes, don't, we are. I have no problem with where I'm going to make fun of BMW riders as much as I make fun of some <laughs> Harley riders. Okay. It's just fun to, to bust balls. So. It is. It is. But they are really very similar. So what you, so I just had my first service. Yeah. Actually, I'm doing it for my second service. I'm going to hit like 5,000 miles here pretty quick. And we're due up anywhere from five to 6,000. And I didn't even look at the price on the first service. We had, oh, oh I wish you would have find that out. We'll bring it up in another podcast episode to see if they truly are the German is. Harley. And the Germans and the BMWs have valve clearance right. uh, maintenance, which is the, the Harleys don't, which is more expensive, even though the heads That's stick dumb. out, right? And you just, anyway, so we'll see. And the BMWs have a run-in check, right? 
not a break-in check, a, a run-in run in check. Leave it to the Germans. And not only do they have one, they have two. One at 500, one at 750. Mm, they're running. <laughs> That's totally How right. much difference is it going to change in 250 miles? <laughs> I hope none, but maybe a lot. Good anyway, here, okay, okay. I could go. Right. No, it's awesome information. It is, it's fun. It's I fun. never know what I'm going to get. I, I could, I could actually do a whole episode because I have on that right there. I have about a thousand questions that I would like to go down that rabbit hole. Remind me. Let's, let's do throw that. them out when you're talking about the Harley stuff. I'll throw some nuggets out. Okay. All right. Cool. Mm -hmm. If I can talk. Oh yeah, yeah. If I have four or five more beers, my you'll be okay. talking. Yeah, I'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Bikeaholics, searching for new and exciting motorcycle products? Zero 3D has just what you're looking for. Check out their wide variety of innovative products for Hardy Davidson motorcycles. Zero 3D's got your back with chrome lighting and comfort products. No modifying, cutting, grinding, or welding for an easy installation. You know what that equals, Michael? Less time installing, more time riding. <laughs> yeah. I, no, I just yeah. wanted to get you. I wanted to see your eyes. I was Zero 3D he has was a now. design team with over 40 years experience with a passion for design and innovation. These guys are bikers, care about bikers, just like you. They pride themselves on great customer service. Got a question? Get in touch with them via email. Sales at Zero3D.com. Give them a call. 715-808-0027. Zero 3D is distributed in the U.S. by Drag Specialties in Europe by Parts Europe and Zodiac and in Asia by Twin Art. Check at your local Harley dealership. Ask for Zero Parts. Better yet, help support us right here. Head over to lawabidingbiker.com for slash store. Check out our full line of Zero 3D products. We would really appreciate your support. So, getting back right into what we were talking about here. That is the 1K service on a Harley Davidson. I'm not even going to say please because it just confuses people. So, I get uh, access. Um, you guys know that. I, I'm friends with Harley Mechanics. Um, they, I've, I've, I know them, uh, know, like, and trust them and they, the same back and I get kind of some access and I can ask a whole bunch of questions and I've learned over the years, which is why I wanted to start this platform. Like Michael said up front to help you guys, I continually do that because I always want to make sure that I'm on cue with the information that I'm giving and that I'm really seeing what I'm seeing and what's happening is really happening. So this isn't something I'm making up. Um, I actually spent time at a recent 1K service on my Milwaukee 8. Um, the 1K service for you guys that don't know is the same as the 5K service. I'll just tell you that up front. It's called a break-in, or if you're German, it's called a run-in, as we've learned here today. <laughs> as we've learned here today. So I had my my run-in, make sure everything was guten tight. Um, <laughs> just well played. Yes. Well played. Thank you, yes. thank you, thank you. Um, so I, I just want to make sure. Now, we have two service videos. Um, I will put them in the show notes. You can always go to lawabidingbiker.com forward slash buy videos. That's all our four purchase videos. We have a pre-Milwaukee 8 um, uh, service video and we have a, uh, a Milwaukee 8 uh, service video. So pick the one that you want. They're both the same, but for those particular motors. Um, so here's the deal. Uh, we show you in those videos. And here's where I'm going to get on a little bit of a rant. You guys can go on this. Um, but we get emails now and then it, it's rare. It's actually rare. Most people buy those service videos and are elated that, that they have them. And what I put in those videos, because I already knew the information that I've reaffirmed recently on my one K service, uh, what mechanics in a dealership actually do for your services. Now there are rumors out there. There is a misconception um, with BMW too, um, because they want to keep it mysterious. They want to, um, you to take it to the dealership. They want to think it's special wrenches and specialty tools. They want you to believe that they're doing 2000 checks on your bike. They want that. It's a dealership. They, they have to be, uh, you know, perf it has to be perfection. And let me tell you, I know that there's Harley dealerships out there that listen to this podcast heavily. There's mechanics that listen to this podcast. They have commented. I want you to know that by and far, Harley mechanics are, uh, dealership mechanics, cert certified technicians are awesome, awesome professionals. They know what they're doing. They do do what they're supposed to be doing. And um, just because the dealership says that they're supposed to do X amount of things doesn't mean that that relates to real world, kind of like any industry. Well, it's just about the bottom dollar. Correct. Right. Which is why they say A costs this much right. per hour and B costs this much per hour. Correct. Right. That's all that that is about. Exactly. And it's no different than than a car dealership. Right. This is not 
you know, to, to, to Harley. And so I, I love our dealerships. Um, I, I love the, the mechanics. I have no problem. So this is not a put down. At, uh, this is real life right. dealership, not right. just a motorcycle dealership. So please, if you're listening out there, I'm not, none of this is meant, this is just to tell what the truth is, which people should know. Um, and they're not doing anything wrong at all. It's the industry. It's, it's dealership industry. It's how it goes. Um, well, this goes back to the whole, uh, mystical creature stuff mm -hmm. to do with Harley Davidson's. It isn't just Harley Davidson's. It's any vehicle that you BMW drive, any, right. any, any Chevy vehicle, not, not, Dodge. Yeah. Not just motorcycle, but any vehicle. They yep. have certain time frames that they say this fix is going to take so long to do. And this is how much it is per hour. That's what the that's, book says. That's what the book says. Right. Whether it takes them that time or 10 minutes, right? You're still paying for whatever, the service manual says this is how long it takes to do A, B, and C. Exactly. I'm in, glad you brought that up. In defense of dealerships, though, the one bonus to going to a dealership. Okay, let me re, let me back up. It's supposed to be a bonus of going to a dealership is they're going to carry parts, right? Right. And so you go to an indie, and I have, I take my truck to an indie mechanic, our local guy. He's a good dude. Always has to order parts. Could if I went longer, to right? Dodge, Dodge technically is supposed to have those parts. And we're talking outside of general service. Because yes, everybody's right. got the parts for oil change. Well, oh, I yeah, mean, sure. You know, but yeah, sure, right. But yeah, but right. I mean, in general, yeah. dealerships are supposed to carry the parts to fix your car right away. Supposed short, to. Yeah, supposed short of, <laughs> to. So when short they've of done, body work or whatever. Right, right. Yeah, but even then, so that, that frustrates me. When I go to a dealership, hey, I'm taking my Dodge to this dealership to get it fixed and I have to wait eight days for parts. Right. That Then I'm like, nah, screw you guys. You know, yep. and it happens. Right. So. Good point. Good point. And I'm glad you brought that up, Michael, because um, that was part of something we were going to bring up. So there you go. You do have, you know, X amount of time for this service. So, um, so again, I, I, I put that up front. We're not talking bad. So, um, oh God, where can we go with this? I, I guess, so I was in and I wanted to reaffirm. So in our videos, we show you what is actually done. And I reaffirm that I actually stayed there the whole time uh, that my bike was getting the 1K oil change filter oil lube filter, what we all think about oil can Henry style service um, and safety inspection, right? Um, we always throw that in there, oil change and safety inspection, general service. Um, and I, I stood with them a lot of the time. I went back and I actually BS'd with them. Um, could have been a girl too. I don't know. I'm, you guys will have, I'm not telling you where this was. Um, it actually, I mean, come on, there's not too many texts that are female. There should be, right. there's probably going to be in the future, but right now there's not that many. If there was, I'd have been back there the whole time. All the time, right? Mm. right. Yeah. Mm. Especially if she's hot. That'd be, uh, that helps a lot. <laughs> all right. Um, I, I would even if she wasn't hot. Double still, service, double right. service. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, Clean man. oil in, and then I'm just going to stay. Yeah. A hot Harley chick mechanic. Oh. A little grease on her face right here, dude. But let's face it, Lipstick, if she was a Harley chick hair, in like three years, she'd have no teeth. Takes her glasses off, right? <laughs> she'd yeah. have no teeth. And then she'd have to unroll the, you know, <laughs> right. and then it'd be over. It's fine. Yeah. And then you wake up and it's actually a 400 pound chick yeah, yeah. and she's out front with snaggly teeth, smoking, smoking a cigar, yeah. drinking, it's chugging not, coffee, dude, picks not good. with her hand down her. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Not good. All right. So anyways, we got to stay on track. Um, so I, I, here's what they do. We're going to go through. I actually have the uh, PDF right up here. And so I talked to this um, mechanic very open um, with me about what was going on. Um, they basically, the reason the Hardy oil changes cost upwards of $400 is because like Michael said, in the book, it says three and a half hours. We've showed you guys on a video. Once you get good at it, you can actually do it in an hour. Okay. And that's the safety inspection tops. An hour. tops. That's if you're working fast, if you're drinking beer, visiting with buddies, hour and a half. Um, but that's everything they do in our video. Um, the safety inspection, the oil change, filter, lube, all that kind of stuff. Um, it, it is what it is. He said it's three and a half hours in the book. That's what they charge. That's what you're going to get. It does not take them three and a half hours. In fact, when he was done with mine and he was even not going fast, even with the test right afterwards, we we're at about an hour and 20 minutes. Right. Okay. Yep. Um, so now he's efficient because he's a mechanic and he's fast. He's done tons of them. Right. So, um, take that in mind. Uh, but I, I did get to talk to him about exactly what they do. We're going to go through, I have a PDF up here that they gave me that they actually gave me after the service. This is a, a Hardy Davidson. It's a printout. And basically what they print out, um, the mechanics do is they print out a checklist. Um, and I was going to go back to and some of the, 
Yeah, that's the ahead. checklist that's in the service uh, manual. Correct. It's very similar. That's all it is. Yes, exactly. It's it's actually just a little bit different, but it's very similar. Very similar. I noticed just a few different things, but it's nothing. They don't do anything different than what's in the service manual. Right. It's just for their use, basically. Um, but what I was going to go back to is we get an email now and then. This is my rant. Um, you know, w- once in a while, somebody will buy the video and go, hey, I bought your video. I did my service. This is how it always starts. I was in talking to my Harley service rider and mechanic. And they said that your video might be incomplete because on the board, they check 200 things. Oh, sure they do. <laughs> it's a 200 point inspection. Does your video, and this will be pre-purchased some people, and I'm not dogging any of these people. They're good people. They're just, they're misinformed, which is again, why we have this platform. Right. And so they'll ask before I purchase your video, I want to know, does it show all two? I was into my mechanics dealership and I told him I, you know, was thinking about doing it myself. Does your video show me all 200 things that the dealership does? I have a canned response for that because we get it now and then. No, they actually don't do that, sir. Um, that's what your service writer will tell you, but that's not actually what they do. I've spent time with the mechanics, blah, blah, blah. Here's what they actually do. We show you everything a dealership actually does and nothing more. Actually, we do show a few things more in our video. Right. Um, so we'll go through this in the interest of time. We're, yeah, we're doing good. Um, so this is the actual printout that he gave me afterwards, what they actually are checking. And again, 1K is very similar to 5K. Of course, as you get up in services, at some point, you're going to have to do plugs like is 20 or 30,000. You know, there are extra things at extra service, but this is, our video shows you the basic that has to be done every time. But let's check. Okay, let's check. Well, I, wish not, I wish I had a little board right here. Yeah. Just, you, you, should do it, you should do it yeah. every time though. Right, and this is the basic stuff. Well, yeah, what we show you is what you do every time. Right. Yeah, at twenty thousand, you're gonna at fifty thousand, you're gonna do a fuel filter. I mean, but we don't show you those things because those aren't routine. But wait, right, I'm gonna right, I'm right. gonna show you a neat trick, and I I guarantee you this is gonna pan out. I'm gonna take a tally. Right. Okay. Hold on, we're gonna go through this. Ready? Let's do it. What? Okay. So you want me to go through what he? I'm got a PDF. You, oh yeah. Okay. L- let me get to the PDF. Do we do we want to do the PDF right now and go through each of it? I don't, you got to tell me which way you're going. Cause I have, I, what are you trying to do? I'm going to keep tally of everything we check. I I'm tracking. And okay. I get you, we're going to, we're going to get to probably more than 200, but it's going to seem silly. You're going to go, why would that be that way? But then, right. then, Oh, Oh, okay. So the video, we check 500 things. Right. But, but if you, if you I'm literally tracking. tally it all up. So we're just going to talk about it. So, yeah. and then you're going to keep a tally. Okay. So yep. here's, here's, I have a PDF that he gave me after here's me and my conversation with them. So let's talk about my conversation with them about what they actually check. So here's what he said. Of course, our video and what they check. Um, first of all, I asked him, I, I said, I said, straight up, dude, I said, here's the deal. Do you check 200 things and do you check every torque on bolts? And he looked at me and he goes, uh, no, no, we don't do that. I go, well, some people think that that's what you do. He goes, we don't No dealership does that. There's not even 200 things to check. There is, uh, it, there is, if you really, if you want to check the seat and the grips, okay. That's, if you wanted to I, break I, down every uh, nut yes. and bolt on it from we, tip to stern. Which would take more than three and a half hours. Yeah, you then, couldn't check then, spec, or you couldn't check torque on every fastener. No, you can't. No, There's you no can't, way. because some of them don't have a torque rating. Right. Well, they so, all, everyone, they do, but like, they you're do, not going to take the head off and check the, right, you're not gonna, the, the yeah, yeah. Uh, cylinder well, there's it should right. be way more than three and a half hours yeah. or whatever they say that it is. Correct. It just, it's not realistic. So no. he was adamant with that really quick. He kind of chuckled and I go, he, he laughed and he laughed too. And I'm like, okay, well, that's what a lot of people believe you guys do. He goes, yeah, that's not happening. Changes the oil in all three holes. Okay. Duh. Right. We know that primary transmission engine, all three holes. Boom. Screaming Eagle synthetic. Okay. Some people think that too, that my dealerships put special oils in each case. Because you can, you we've could, talked yeah, about that in the right. past. They don't do that. They they put Screaming Eagle in all three holes. Mm-hmm. All right, air filter if needed. Okay, they do what we show you in our video: how to inspect it, and then we show you how they're all paper mesh filters. Now you clean them with soap and water. We show you how to do that. You can. Uh, we there is a specific way to do that, but we show you in the video. Oil filter every change, of course. Mm-hmm. We got an oil filter, so they do do that. All right. Here's an interesting thing I want to bring up, which is not in our video. It doesn't matter. I do it my way. So here's the problem. <laughs> They're a dealership. 
And so sometimes guys will come back and you know who I'm talking about, these type of guys. And right. they're like, um, I took my bike home and I parked at my garage and there was a drip of oil. Oh, yes, yes. That's called residue. Correct. And so they get pissed because these guys come back and go, <clears throat> I had this serviced and I ride my bike a hundred miles a year and I cannot have an oil. <laughs> yeah, I trailer yeah. it. I trailer it to Sturgis it's and then I trailer it back. 78. Right. It's got 3,000 miles. No, some of these rich guys, it's a 2018 Milwaukee yeah. 8 Ultra Classic. With a 35 inch front tire right. and wheel. And, uh, <laughs> right. and it sits in their garage. But I did go to, I rode around Sturgis. <laughs> I rode. I'm just teasing. If you trailer your bike to Sturgis, that's fine. Um, so talk, uh, so he said, I asked him, he's, he's in there cleaning all the factory paste out of my Milwaukee 8 because they put all this fucking paste they in do. it. They do. Okay. What it and you take so it it like paste thread lock thread thread yeah. paste no it's um thread like uh, pipe sealant instead uh, of sorry. pipe tape oh. right it's I've so never owned a, I've never owned a brand new bike so I don't know what that is yeah it's a uh, yeah they it use is. it for sprinkler systems and stuff yeah. it's it's thread paste instead of thread tape uh, it's just a thread just paste to seal it okay. all right just keep it from leaking right. that one drop of oil right. okay. <laughs> <laughs> on the dealership floor that yeah. doesn't make you want to buy, buy the bike they right. seal it up so it literally can't it's just leaking so the problem is it's all gummed up in there. And uh, so they, he actually, I go, what are you doing? He had the plug. He's cleaning it out with a pick and shit. He goes, I get rid of all of it because we use thread tape here. Mm -hmm. I go, why do you use thread tape? He goes, so that we don't get that customer. Yeah, that we just make damn sure one little speck of oil is not going to get on their garage floor and we don't have to deal with the fuckers. Okay. And we send them away. And I go, oh, well, we don't do that. He goes, you don't need to. I go, no. he goes, who cares if you get a drop of oil? It's just like you said, it can leak around the plug once in a while. It's just a drop of oil. So anyways, I thought that was interesting information to share with the audience. Um, you can use thread tape if you are one of those people that worry. We never use thread tape around here ever. And we don't in our video. And I, and I still don't even have a drop. It, you know, they just make sure. He goes, we just have to make sure because freaking customers complain. Um, I, I don't, asked, I don't, you, you put thread tape on that. And if you don't get it right, I mean, it's not that big of a deal, but a little bit tears off. It gets sucked into the oil filter. Oh yeah, true. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not a big deal, but I'm like, why would I put that in there? Right. I, there's I, no reason to introduce something foreign into the oil stream. It's got an O-ring. I've it never does. had one right. leak. No, I actually it, do use thread tape, mm. but I make sure that it is at least two threads back. down. Back. Yeah, nice. Right. right. Nice. You know, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't, there's no reason to have that protrude into the brick right. sump. Do you use thread tape on your wiener? Sometimes actually makes it look bigger. You keep nope. it two inches down <laughs> no, from the tip. I, I, no, if I did, that'd be all there is. <laughs> I don't even That's know where it. that came yeah, from. I don't either. No thread tape. I just wanted no to fuck with them because no thread tape on the winner. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that that was off topic. Uh, off topic. So the un only unthreaded, <laughs> unthreaded. The only <laughs> torque they check. Um, I asked them. I go, do you go around and check all again the 200 point check? The only torque check that they do sometimes is the axles. Right. Front and rear axle. I yeah. get that on break-in. I get that on the very first service. It's so easy to check. We show you in our videos. Yeah. Again, we actually go above and beyond. Grab a torque wrench and torque it. It takes about two minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Check the front one. Put the right socket on it. Check the back one. We oh, get. Yeah. We show you how to do that in our service videos. Right. Super simple with a torque wrench. So big deal. And it's usually, it's always fine. That right. You just put the torque wrench and it goes click. Yeah, it's still fucking fine. Yeah. If you guys don't know, even if you didn't torque those right, there's safety mechanisms on your Harley. Your, even if your axle nut came off, your axle won't come off. No. The front won't because it's got a pinch clamp. The back won't because it's got a safety thing that actually keeps your nut from backing off. It could never back off as long as the safety <laughs> clip is there. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's got you the clip. cannot have yeah. your nut back right. off. You can't, bro. you can't, no, you can't bust nut a nut. package is bad. So <laughs> it, it would be bad if that happened. They, yeah. they put all kinds of safety, but it's still good to That's check fine. the torque. You could get a, it would get a, it could get a little wobbly and stuff if, if it wasn't. So, um, of course they check tire pressure and tread. Woo. Tread is a visual to see if you're in your wear indicators and then they sell you a new tire if it is. So they make more money there. Pressure. Woo. That's tough. Mm -hmm. All right, good. We show you how to do all that in our video. Lube the clutch and brake handles if it's needed. Big deal. Take a little, um, I have what they use. It's a little, you can use graphite or whatever. You just, you don't actually put it in the cable. It's just where the handle is in the, that clutch housing. You just spray a little bit in there, guys. There it's just you the go. hinge joint. The hinge joint. That's it. And I rarely do that unless it, it starts feeling crusty or something. I, I honestly. It's your I, age, crusty is fucking my, possible. My, my two, <laughs> it is true, true. Very, very nice. <laughs> nicely done. My 2014, I've never lubed the clutch or brake handle and they're fine. They they put a little grease in them um, at the factory. So you're, you're probably good to go. So um, a lot of what they do, I asked them is, visual inspections. Like we tell you in our video, we show you how to visually inspect things. Um, check the switch housings. They can get loose at the factory. Oh yeah. A T25 and a T27, you know, it, it, how honestly, many switch housings are there? 
two, two. right left and right and you can see the bolts right there if it rotates on your bars it's loose it's probably loose i mean fuck this is just yeah. you know and i'm not again i'm not dogging him this is just general shit guys um a lot is visual he told i said so a lot of what you do is just you walk around the bike and look for anything yes we look look at the fuel line okay fuck it's not cracked look at the you know is it leaking out of the heads are your you know are your gaskets going bad right they've had a little bit of an issue with some milwaukee eights on that they had it in my uh 06 too um you know they may be check the header bolts or the gasket has set, um, which is common. And I, I do check those. Um, how many head bolts are there? Just four on each head Two. No oh, head bolts. So I'm talking about, uh-huh. I'm talking about where the exhaust. Meets. Oh, the exhaust. So there's two because what happens on each head, the exhaust correct. flange, there's four exhaust the flange, flange four. Bolts. Yeah. Flange bolts, flange bolts. And they do get loose guys. It, just like when you change yeah. your exhaust, like on my 2014, after about a thousand miles, I say 500 is good. Actually. Um, when you put new exhaust on, especially if you put new gaskets, they seat and then they do get loose. So you just take a wrench and you, you tighten put a, them. You tight, give them a couple turns. You know, that that's something that I should do on, you should do if you do new exhaust. And because it's out of the factory, it does have new gaskets. The motor hasn't been heated. Right. And so they seat and they can, that's legit, get loose. I lost two of those nuts on my... Right. So basically, you're nutless. I'm I mean, nutless. let's call it yeah. what it right. is. Right. Yeah. And that would be for the one K service because it's brand new, right? Yeah, because your nuts haven't been heated yet. Right. Because your nuts haven't been really used that much. I'm still young, so they haven't dropped. So. Right. <laughs> oh, so they're totally, they're like at a constant temperature. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Nicely That's cool, done. though. It's cool when they drop. Mm hmm. Then you can like use them and stuff. Mm hmm. Oh, Whoa, his, where'd that come from? What, oh, I've never that heard that a, one before. That was a good one, wasn't that it? That was a good one. <laughs> hey, um, you, so you're on a, you have to, it's your turn. Oh, he's got to go get beer. Yeah. Oh, they're out of beer. It's his turn. I didn't know I'm this good. is a... I'm good. I got to run the show. So we got to keep on track here. Um, so may, maybe... uh Did you may, just say we got to keep we on do, track? We do, because we got uh, a live episode to All do. right, let's go. So maybe check the header bolts where the gasket is set. That would be a 1K service. They're never going to check that again, because once they're seated, they, they'll do a visual. They'll look up there with a flashlight. That takes about five seconds to see if the nuts are on there. Um they will, ch- they will check the belt tension. Um, um, they may, they'll basically look at it. Yeah. Um, it, but it's so easy to it do is. with a belt tension gauge. We show you how to do that in our service video. You get a belt tension gauge. We All show belt you deflection. belt deflection. Exactly. We have a video, a separate video, free video on that. How many belts are there? Uh, one. Oh yeah. Okay. I'll just check. Right. One. I'm um, wearing one on my pants five, and then right. there's one on the bike. Maybe they check that. Right? Oh, okay. And then they check that the lights are working. All right. Um, signals and shit. They don't even do that on our police bikes because they know we check that all the time to make sure that our lights are working and we would tell them if they weren't. Um, How many lights are there? Uh, There's two. The, the tail light. Tail lights, front signals, rear signals. So and then two, the, four, six. On my bike, it's got brake, those running lights. Running lights. So yeah, brake. Right. Okay. And that's a visual inspection. All right. So again, the book says they have three and a half hours for a 1K or 5K service. That is what the book um um, um, says so. All right. Oh, that gum. Also, I want to mention one more thing. The reason they get rid of that paste and stuff is one of the mechanics actually cracked a new Milwaukee oil pan, taking that bolt off. Because it seizes that it shit in seizes there. The it gets hot. There. Yep. And so right. they get. That's why he was getting rid of it. Right. And they use thread tape instead because it's easy to get it's off. Real, yeah. Right. They actually cracked an oil pan removing that on a Milwaukee eight. So be aware of that. Down you don't there. want your bolt to your drain bolt to seize. You do not want that. It's a okay. Bad wait. Deal. Hold on. Let me interject real quick. Mm-hmm. So we're already up to five, ten. I can skip count by fives. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty. We're gonna be at thirty. Okay. Points of inspection, right? Nice. So 200. We're not done there though. Okay, let's keep going. We got to go, go through this. Oh, check operation. To make sure. Okay, so how many switches? Okay, sorry, go ahead. So here's the checklist that, because I only talked to him for a while. He would, can't tell me because he needs this list to go through everything. Right. Here's the things that he checked off after I got my bill um, for upwards of $400. Mm. I did the department pays for that. I wouldn't, I don't take my bike. Guys, just, you know, this is my police bike. They make us take it to the dealership. Um, right now just because it's government. Um, all right. So here we go, but it's great. Cause I get to see talk to shit. mechanics and yeah. see this shit. So oh, yeah. otherwise I would never see it. So check operation, electrical equipment and switches. Uh, that's many, part of the lights. But how many switches are those? No, 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 no. there's the high, low. Yeah. You got four, you got two on each side. You got Plus hazards, you signal. got start on your left. You got headlight. And Plus you uh, have the, um, cruise control, right. vault audio. 
So what is they don't they, check cruise control because that would have to be out on the road. Oh yeah, so if audio. they go on a test ride, they may check it, but I doubt it. So they have audio, uh, radio station on the. So how they many switches? What is there about all the push? If they checked your, all that, they it, don't check it. They go ride the bike, and as long as it's working, it's working. Good. Is the, if the bike starts, that's a check. They have to start it to go test right. See what I'm saying? That's true. Right. I mean, both switches, the starter and the kill switch, right. and the ignition is and all they working check all the of a sudden. The ignition switch. So wait, hold on. There's that's the ignition switch. They're because they're riding the bike. Right. You're you're really yeah. gonna test each one of these. Even that's no, good. no no no. What I'm saying is no. I know no no. What yeah, I, yeah, I'm not gonna. Yeah yeah. Right. What I mean is you're actually tallying shit yes. that they check just because they're riding the bike. Right. Yeah. Because, and they go out and they have to signal because they have to make a left or right turn. That's all checking on the test ride, right, which is yeah. the funnest part. They get but to go out and ride a police bike. Yeah, he yeah, loves sure, it, dude. Absolutely. It's a neat fucking he trick. Goes, people really freak out. Oh, yeah. Some old, he goes, when I ride hair. your police bike, like people <laughs> freak out when you're riding around. They do really stupid shit. I go, yeah, they do really <laughs> yeah. stupid shit. And all of a sudden, it's a police motorcycle. And yeah. people oh, freak no, out. there's a cop behind me. He was laughing. I told him, I said, listen, next time you're out, write a f- couple fucking tickets for me. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, ha- I need to get my quota for the day. Just call me Tom 24 right? or whatever. I said, yeah. I need my quota for the day, bro. And if you get me ahead. So, yeah, I'm just teasing <laughs> yeah. people. I'm teasing. <laughs> all right. So, Check front tire pressure. We already talked about that. I'm just going to go through inspect front brake. Wait, wait, wait. Don't go oh, too fast. fluid levels. Fluid. Brake and clutch, that's two. Well, I'm going to go fast on the stuff we've already okay, mentioned. Go, go. go. So, um, yeah. So, they look in the reservoir to see if it's at the line. That's two of them. Three. Clutch, front brake, rear brake, right? Yes. Okay. That takes about 10 seconds. At least. And a flashlight. All right. We show you all the... Everything we're mentioning here, by the way, is in our maintenance videos, guys. So, um, check dot for clutch. We talked about that. Oh, look at... Um, he checked the fluid or the uh, moisture level, which is nice. what they're doing, remember? Yes, that which was awesome. We takes, show you how to do in our maintenance video. That takes 1.5 minutes. It, correct. You get a moisture tester. You don't have to do that, especially if you replace it, which we, I haven't put that video out yet, Oscar. We have a complete yeah. flush video. I haven't even edited it. Um, but if you, you don't even need to check your moisture just level if you're it. doing it every two years, yeah, you that's don't fine. just replace it every two years. Fuck how do you, that. How do you check moisture? Moisture tester. You, you stick your tongue in it touch, and if it feels it. wet, you do. No, he actually moist? bought it. He has a moisture tester. Really? It's pretty cool. Oh mm-hmm. yeah. Don't wait five years like I did. I have it under my bed. If you want to take it home and test it, bro. (laughs) Yes, you do. Because sometimes you want to make sure that the moisture is proper. Oh, wow. You got to get. Before you put. (laughs) We need to move on. We need to move on. I need to take control of this right now because we're getting off track. I bought it on a porn site, but I use it. I, it's <laughs> under the bed, but I, I use it for my reservoir. It goes with that tattoo video. He has right. to check the moisture level of the, <laughs> it, because uh, it, it, <laughs> it it dings at you if it if if it's if it's plenty moist. Yeah. It, it just yeah. says it just says go time. Oh yeah, yeah. it just yeah. says go, yeah. yeah go yeah. time. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. Okay, so uh, right. check hand Sorry, control folks. tension. We already did that. The yep. housing checks clutch lever. Yep, handlebar clamp master. Cylinder. Oh wait, 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 master cylinder clamp screw torque. What the? F- that's the that's all the switch housings, right? That is a lot of master stuff. cylinder handlebar clamp screw torque. Yeah, that's the fucking the housing. That's the housing. The, oh, there's two of those though on each side. Correct. I didn't yeah. get those. Oh my god, you're Shut stretching. Up. No, you're I'm not. Stretching. No, that's I'm just not. The control this is, housing. This is clamp. America. Look at yeah, now yeah. here, now here because these aren't due. We're not going to talk about these. They aren't due. All right, so. Um, so replace engine oil and filter. We got, got that. that. Yeah, we got that. They cross these out, and I can't read what they Check are. Coolant. coolant. Oh, that oh, would be for ultras, yeah. right? Some yep. of the coolant stuff. Check radiator. But if you take an your ultra. cap off, if you have an ultra, and check your fluid, if it's oh, good, wait, how many go back go. up there? How many are those? One, two, three. Okay. If you have an ultra, right? But well, this applies to. I, I agree. Get I agree. Mike, oh, do you, is yours twin cooled? Yeah. No. No, mine is fifteen. Mine is not. No, We're skipping over the it three was, whole. Okay, inspect oil lines. So you look down there where your oil yeah. cooler is, and if they're not leaking, they're good. Okay, oil and fuel lines. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, look at your lines. If they're not leaking, mm-hmm. you're good. Inspect fuel lines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Brake fluid clutch. level. We already did that. Dot for rear cage. Oh, pads. How many pads are there? Two, four, six. No, well, there's four in the front and two in the two back. Two in the back. Right. So That's two, four, six. We show you how yeah, to do that so. in our video. You look at them, and if the lines are still there, and we have a. If you do need to replace them, we have a free YouTube video on exactly how to replace, which I need to do. I gotta I've do got mine. the pads in there before we go cross country because my rear getting bad. Inspect. Uh, Jiffy stand. Oh, Woo! Jiffy. Put some uh, lube. Lube. Put some. Put a little grease on your. We show you that in our video. You can actually take it off real quick and add a little lube in there with Harley lube. You have it to use to be Harley or lube. BMW if you it have BMW. Mm-hmm. It's special BMW. It's a different kind of kick. It's a German kick stand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, fuck yeah. All right. <laughs> it, <laughs> that's the right amount of friction. Yes, we are going to keep going on down the list. We're doing very, very good. And then I'm going to be interested to uh, to see. 
don't don't give us a tally yet because I I want to save it, dude. Um, till the very end, we can see where we're at. But uh, we need to do this real quick. We're gonna yeah. we're gonna make it. You want to try this, Oscar? Oh, do I have to read? Well, it's up to you. You want me to start now? Yeah. Oh. The music's going. Jesus. Are you searching for the easiest <laughs> and quickest detachable luggage system for your motorcycle? Rick Rack has just what you're looking for. Forget all those frustrating straps and bungee cords that can come loose and slap you in the face. Paint. Paint. <laughs> Jesus. Check out one of Rick Rack's awesome quick attached strapless luggage rack systems. Rick Rack. This father-son team designed something really special that you can't find anywhere else. Yep, and these guys ride, so they truly understand the needs of bikers. The Rick Rack quick attach system is strong, durable, and secure with a locking system. Also, check out their full line of quality touring bags to accompany your your quick damn it. Oh my god. Well, dude. you you covered it. Your quick detach system. Horrible. Once you use Rick Rack, you'll never go back. What are you waiting for, bikeaholics? Emphasis added. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I totally blew that. The Rick Rack system is badass, though. Yeah, it is. It is. There you go. Head over to lawbidingbiker.com forward slash store. Get hooked up with the Rick Rack system right now, guys. We're moving the heck out of those things. And guys, really. I am a convert. I, they really are. are. They yeah, are. They're badass. And we need to get your bike back in here. I was talking to uh, Shane Riffle who owns that company and uh, we need to put more emphasis on the uh, ultra. So we actually need to do a separate video, which is quick. Okay. We actually need to install it and show it on an ultra. Cause we're selling more of the street glide road glide. Cause that's the video we did on yeah. guys are forgetting. Like you can put that on the top of your trunk yeah. and yeah, add a I, whole nother freaking trunk. It's to, awesome. My wife my loved plan it. is to actually order one of those. And cause I have that luggage rack on my trunk is to do that. Yeah. I'll be traveling cross country to Kansas city with it this year it'll That's be awesome. my first time using it and so it's gonna be i can't go on that trip oh i know i can't either it sucks that does suck i'm gonna miss you guys i'll miss you too honey mm. i'll right. miss our nights alone in the hotel room and i know dude you're, you're, you're an drone. integral part of my documentary That's films <laughs> with no <laughs> plugs to charge your phone oh yeah damn it. never gets mad all right I so really in, let's see where uh where are we at? yeah we gotta move all right so check and adjust l- lubricate got that lube, brake clutch controls okay we got that What's this? Oh, check front axle nut, 70 foot that. pounds. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. We show it. And adjust Tires. drive belt and sprock- sprockets. You don't check the sprockets, but I'm, that's in my time. That's when you, the sprockets are when you look at the belt. Yeah, they're when called, you check They're the called function. cogs, right? right. The, in the belt. I mean, if the belt's good, the sprocket's good. You could so. have a broken cog. You could have a broken. I mean, a tore that would be one. a belt, though. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. More than the sprocket. That's additional thing to check, though. It's true. The there flexion you go. and the cog. If, here's the deal. If you're inspecting the belt, just do this. You're looking at the belt. You got your belt tension gauge. Mm-hmm. Move your eyes to the right out of your peripheral. Oh. And if the sprocket looks good, you've done your inspection. Nice. I mean, nice. Good, you know yeah, I mean? good call. Good yeah. call. No, there absolutely. Check the rear axle nut torque. Yay. Talked about that. Exhaust system. Exhaust system. Really. We already did that. And you can do that auditorily. Correct. When you're riding it again, a lot uh-huh. of this is the test ride. Yep. It's not going. No, wait. Right. It doesn't have an exhaust leak. I don't have an exhaust leak. I mean, we're good. Honestly, and we're not dogging. We're not dogging any dealerships or mechanics. It's just stuff you can check while you're riding your fucking bike. Check the battery, bro. You're you're testing. And that would be what they would say anyway. Right. These are not, it's not rocket science. Correct. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, You guys are missing out a whole part of consumerism in America that you need to get involved in. Sorry. Check the battery terminals. The torque. There's no... Torque spec. Okay, there is a torque spec on the battery terminals. No one did. They're not checking Stop those. It. They didn't even take my seat off. If the bike's running and it starts, they, yeah. they never took my seat off to check my no. battery ever. No, Why but never. Would you? you wouldn't. You look at the voltmeter, you ride it, and yeah. if it's holding, Why it's good. You? It's charging. The charging system's working. Yep. Yeah, those are things you wouldn't dig into. And if this is your first time listening to this podcast, one question I'm going to s- clear up really quick. It does not void your warranty. It does not void your warranty. I heard the service rider tell a guy while I was in there. Yeah. I had him. He told him that he he said everything that needed to be said that is included in the Magnuson Moss Warranty Act. Yes. We've done a full episode on it. Go to the website, lawbidingbiker.com, search for Magnuson Moss Warranty Act. We did a whole episode on it. You're federally protected. The service writer will tell you, yes, you can do your own, keep your receipts for your oil, sign the back of your service book that you did the service. They absolutely cannot void your warranty for it. It's exactly what the service writer didn't say. It's the Magnus and Moss, but he right. told him exactly what's in the Magnus and Moss. Warranty and he act, said, right. no, you can keep your receipts, make sure it's okay. You can do it. They have to tell you that. Yep. If they're telling you any different, it's illegal. Okay. Right. All right. So, um, and uh, uh, Michael will come and arrest you. 
yes, for violation sure. of the Magnuson Moss warranty. Oh yeah, Act. you're a freaking federale. Don't you guys have municipal codes for that? Oh yeah, I all do. day, every day. I all do. right. So let's lubricate fuel door hinge and latch oh, with Harley, yeah, that with Harley Lube. Harley Lube. With only Harley Lube. If you're what gas- is this magic Harley Lube? I can't even hmm. believe they put this on Unicorn there. pee. Can you believe they even put that on there? Oh my God. I can. This, you guys just- What is it We though? need to I'm finish serious. here. I'm, I'm starting to get a- Road excited. test. Here's where, here we go. Road test to verify component and system functions. There you go. Whoa. That's, that's, <laughs> that's the last page of the document. Hold on. Three of six. In that road test, they also find out at the suspension, front and rear, there's two shocks. But that's not even on here. It doesn't matter. Right. They make a 200 point. What I'm trying to get at is like, I know, I know, I see. But that's not even, the funny mm-hmm. thing is it's not even on their check, like suspension. See what I'm saying? Yeah, it should be. I mean, it should be. Really, honestly, it uh, should be. That's the mo- one of the most important things about the bike. Yep. Control fastener. Okay, we're good. So anyways, that's the end of the document. This yeah. is an official Hardy Davidson document that they print out and they check and they hand it to me. It says Erlacher, my name. And, uh, and it's got all the checks and they put right here on the side, they wrote 42 PSI, oh, which yeah. I, I, I wish they wouldn't do that, but it's actually supposed to be 40 PSI. That's a, yeah, I was going to say that's a little high. It's because they found that a couple of the mechanics down there think that, and it's fine. It's a matter of opinion. They believe that the tires wear better, better if you put the front tire at 42 instead of 40. It's supposed to be 36 and 40. That doesn't have anything to do with the, how the tire wears. Damn it. I need to go in the other I room right know. now. And every time they do it, I back it off back to 40. Yeah. Where it's supposed to be. It, they just do it. And I'm like, it's fine. I'm not going to argue with them. I run them. 38 in my front. And when I'm solo, like 38 in the rear. Yeah. Yeah. You can play with them. How much does it ma- actually make a difference? 42 to 40? Probably not a whole bunch. But I back it off to 36 and 40. I know. Don't. You're, I don't put air in my tires. This shit right, is dangerous. Right. And if you don't put air in them, you don't get fucking flats. Okay. So uh, just, <laughs> I get Goodyear run flats. They're solid core. The funny thing is they put in here, check uh, the front, um, but check the front brake fluid level, but they don't put anywhere in here. Check the rear brake fluid level. Or did you see it? <laughs> yeah, no. You see what I'm saying? No, it's not, it's not yeah, even it on this there. checklist and it says <laughs> yeah. good. It wasn't in there. It, uh, and I know they should probably check. Because they're so. reflex linked in the newer bikes. Not mine though. Okay. Okay. So wait, is that why you think? Yes. Oh, so as long as you check the front, as long as you check one of them, they right. would be good. Theoretically, um, they would be good. I'm tracking. See, good. Because there's enough hydraulic fluid to push all four from either point, just like a car, but a car only has one master cylinder. Right. I wonder, do the new bikes have two? Why would they have two? They two would what? need two. Um, uh, oh, they fluid do. reservoirs. They I, do. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. I don't because they're think, two separate pedals. That's why because right, they're yeah. two separate. Actors. Exactly. Yep. So you check one, then you know you have brake stopping. And right. where, where would the brake fluid go if you didn't have a leak? Nowhere. So we're like already on that little PDF. We're at fifty five. I could stretch that out to two hundred because you check everything as you do as you're just standing by your bike. Yeah. So when they tell you two hundred, and that covers like thirty years of Harley. So they don't say we check two hundred points on your bike. Or my bike, they say we check. There's 200 points of inspection. Yeah, there is because on a 06 Ultra is different than a 14, right. which is different than an 11, you know, Street Glide. So yeah, well, 200 would be easy to get. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if you, I mean, you touch the bag guards. Think about oh, they're tight. Think about all the if things they wanted that you, to, right? But that's right, not even yeah. on their inspe- their own it's inspection not. list. I know, which you is interesting. Make it if you're going to do 200, I would give the customer. If you say on your service right. sign that you do 200, I would at least give them an inspection thing and just check off 200 things that, that you- has 200 look, things on it. That yeah, we're, we're like, yeah. seat, like seat's good. I rode on it. The seat feels fine. Right. We're at 57. 57 things from that checklist and from the first part where you talked yeah, about the sorry, wheel train. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So, uh, you know what? Oh, uh, what? We love- absolutely love our patrons we do we would love to get to know you better being a patron we would love to talk to you in the private facebook group we would love nothing more than that but for whatever reason you don't want to become a patron you don't want some of those benefits you just say i just want to do a flat donation that's how i want to help of course we never balk (laughs) nice one michael (laughs) at a flat donation (laughs) all right let's thank these people for making this possible you don't have to read all that just thank them howard fairchild of medford new jersey Bill Reed of Pittsburgh. Where uh, uh, Let's go on down. Uh, uh, wait, uh, Jose Cuoto? Yep, don't know where he's from. Robert Johnson of Knoxville, Tennessee. Darren's Lovejoy of Charlotte, North Carolina. 
Thomas Krause of Orangeville, California. Thank you. Lawabidingbreaker.com forward slash donate is how they got there. Helps put a little fuel in the Law Abiding Breaker gas tank so we can keep this show heading on down the road. And of course, again, we love flat donations. That's fine. But just remember, if you're leaving a flat donation, especially a substantial one, you could probably get for that same price, a patron membership and uh, get more involved in Law Abiding Breaker Media because we really, really do want to get to know you better and we want you to have some of those benefits. So let's talk about, um, uh, oh, and see, we're not probably going to get to this. Oh, I guess we're okay, but we want to wrap this up. So how many, let's let's break it down and let's just uh, finish up here with the the, 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 the service and, and our thoughts. How many checkpoints did we write down there? I think 57 okay. major points of and inspection. And we're pushing because you're counting every signal, I, yes, yeah, which is good. I'm glad you true. did it. And still we couldn't get to 200. No. Not in a, not in a, you know, and, and, and so again, if you guys, you know, uh, we're not dogging the dealerships. We're not dogging the mechanics. This is just reality. It's I'm, a marketing thing. It is a right? marketing Because thing. when they check the exhaust, they also check the heat shields. Right, right, because they're touching the exhaust. The heat shield's not rattling. Oh, there's two heat shields. Oh, right. there's one. See? Yeah, it's just good call. You can, you can really add it up quick. Right, I'm go, riding on the bike, and the the floorboards are not loose. Yes, so they're tight. And right. there's two bolts. The shifter for the level is working. It's not slipping yes. when I shift. Right. Yes, but they're not physically putting a wrench on it, guys. No, and they don't so, do anything different than you do when you're riding your own bike. Yeah, right, exactly. They're gonna ride. They're gonna do an oil change and a service, and then they're gonna ride it. Right. And then if they feel any deficiencies that you're already feeling that you probably brought it in there for to begin with. Correct. They're not, they're not doing anything. Visual and by feel. Mm -hmm. Right. And I wanted to make this episode because I want it. It's going to be an evergreen episode where when guys now ask this question, I'm going to just refer them to this episode Oh, and they can just listen. And if you have any questions about what a mechanic does on a 1k or 5k Typical oil change service. Here's our video. And also we did a complete episode on it. Yep. And right. uh, feel free to learn. Um, you know, and I just, and I think it, I just want to make sure people know, you know, this isn't just out of our butt, you know, so to speak. No, I actually, totally right. uh, you know, recently updated this information and verified um, with a certified Harley technician and uh, um, great guys, great guys. And wouldn't, you know, for someone else working on my bike, these guys, I wouldn't want anybody else. I work right. on mostly my own bike, but I have to have my police bike worked on by them because of the contracts we have. And I'm, I'm happy and totally think they do a wonderful job. They do. They do job. everything they're nice I would guys. do. Yes, and they right. do, they do nothing more or nothing less than what I would do to my personal bike that I service, um, minus polishing it. And cleaning it very nicely, right? Oh, just, damn them! They I, I gotta, that. yeah, I need to start taking them food, dude. So they maybe. And do you know that. what? Those guys and too legit. Like if you aren't sure, you can ask them, and they generally aren't going to give you marketing bullshit answers. Correct. They're going to give you like some we dealerships do will. They do. But yes, you have to be careful, guys you out do. there. But our dealership's pretty good. They'll they'll be straight up with you if you kind of know what you're talking about, and you ask them. They'll tell you. Yep. Here's some information before we close out that I wanted to get out that you guys might find interesting. Because I sit in there and I get to talk to the service writer and mechanics a lot, I also learn a lot of new information. This is information I didn't know and that you should be aware of, Oscar, Michael, so you can share it with people. We always recommend not getting the download. Right. And what I'm talking about is the EFI tuner download. So you put a stage one air intake and you put pipes on. You got to remap your EFI. There's a couple of ways to do that. We've done extensive episodes on it. Search back in our archive. Um, me and Oscar have done those episodes. We recommend a Vance and Heinz Fuel Pack 3, which we do sell in our store. We actually have them in stock. I was just down there. There's a shelf load of them. Um, lawabidingbreaker.com forward slash store. We'd love to give you hooked up. We have a free video on how to get up and running with that thing. It's super simple. The reason we say that is it's it's about the same price as a Harley download. In the past, we've said it sucks because if you get the stock canned Harley download, if you ever change anything again, you have to go back and pay another $200 for another stock canned Harley download. That is not the case anymore. Harley realized at some point that they're effing people and that people are going to these outside tuners. So now from the service writer himself, he said, if you get one, he was trying to promote their download. A guy said, hey, I put, I'm going to put exhaust and intake in. How much is blah, blah, blah. Still, it seemed like it was around $200. Um, once you get the download, you only pay Harley for the life of that bike once. Oh, And nice. he said, from now on, nice. if you do change stuff in the future, come back and we'll flash it for free for the new map. Mm, nice. Oh, I thought that nice. was an That's interesting cool. thing. Yeah, it's about yeah. time, Harley. Good for them. You know? Right. I still highly recommend the Fuel Pack 3, not only because we sell it, because we all use it around here, and it still gives you way more flexibility. And Vance and Heinz does the same thing. They're going to give you a maps. 
Correct. They're going to give you maps and you can auto tune. Right. You can go out, ride your bike, let the computer learn your bike, your riding, and then tune it for you. You can't do that with a stock download. I still think the stock download, even that it's for the life now, it's a one-time fee. I still think it's a waste. When I redo something, I don't want to have to go to the dealership. So if I redo something, I just go out right here in my own garage and I remap my own EFI right in my own very shopper. But this is a one-time fee, not a one-time, one download. No, it's a one, yeah, right. It's a one-time fee. fee. You have to re-download. If you go back and do, say, cams and high compression heads, then they'll download a new map for free. For free, exactly. Yep. So you're going to have to go back in. That's what I'm saying. I would still just get an uh, EFI tuner so you can do it yourself. You don't have to make a damn appointment and go take your bike and have them hook a computer up to it. You can do it right with our video, guaranteed. You can do it right in your very own shop or garage. What if you don't have a smartphone? If you don't have a smartphone, then, then you, you probably go shouldn't Harley. even have a Harley. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't. If, you shouldn't be riding. The only way the MP3 <laughs> works is with a smartphone. You're, you're not going to take your desktop out there and plug it into your bike. I have to actually wait. You, I have, you, I have we used done to do that, that before we smartphones. Did. We did. Yeah. yeah. I have the, some old video. I laptop found an old picture or, of me laptop sitting. Laptop or desktop? You still have to do that oh, with, the power, with the power, <laughs> power vision. You yeah. still have to hook it up really? to a laptop. I was in yep. my garage, a little desk out there in my laptop, and I was screwing with the fuel we tables. We have videos of it. We do, yeah. It's um, pretty same cool. Same with the auto tuner, power commander yeah. five. You still have to use a yeah. laptop. Right. And really? Yep. That's yeah. what. That's why the fuel pack three is so advanced compared to a lot of the other yeah. tuners. Right. That's why we brought it to our store and yeah. use it and recommend it. And it works. It's awesome. It but does. we're not dogging the power vision. Still a wonderful, we're not going to go down that rabbit yeah, right. hole. We, yeah, have no, a, no, no. we have a power vision video that is awesome. It's one of our premium videos. If you want to get hooked up, the power vision is a powerful unit. Still, Super powerful. It, right. Depending on what you want to do, go back right. in our archive and learn all about EFI stuff, guys. We got uh, plenty of that. So with that said, and before we take it out, anything else that you guys want to add that we didn't add about the, sir, let's think about the main topic, our service inspection that the uh, community would want to know. I think the biggest thing is that people just need to use a little common sense. Mm-hmm. We're trying to help people with that. It's not their fault, right? No, 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 not, no that's it, not it, what I'm saying. No, no. And I get it. I'm just putting that on there that <clears throat> yeah, we no, don't, we don't blame just, anybody. That's why we started this platform. We said that up front is because yeah. uh, it, people just don't know. And you're going to have to go by what your dealership tells you if you don't know. If, right. there's no other, if you're riding your if, bike and you feel something's loose or doesn't feel right. That's an inspection a, point. That's an oh inspe- yeah, fifty right. That, yep. No, but that, that's an inspection inspection point. But that that's take a little neat. take a little time, and you can probably figure it out yourself. Right. And if you can't figure it out yourself, and get in the private not, Facebook group, yeah. patron right. only, then they'll solve then your problems. Nine times out of ten, you can go to the law abiding biker, mm-hmm. uh, private Facebook, YouTube, or private or, yeah, Facebook, right, right, right. Yes, or anything yes. else, and you can probably fix it yourself. Yep. Because it's true, it's it is it's it really is not. We've rocket got science. five years of videos out there yeah, now. It, it really is not rocket science. It's not Some covering them, a shitload of bikes. Oh my god, we've been on a crap load of bikes, and what Mike's saying is absolutely true. Yep, and you know, and not to keep promoting, but that private Facebook group, I'm mm-hmm. telling you guys, we're because we see it. There are guys in there. I've said this before yeah. that know more than I'll ever know. Oh, oh like, yeah, there are like guys yeah. like they should be full time mechanics. I'm like, holy shit. And yeah. I'm like, I can't answer that question. I'm right. not that advanced. I yeah. mean, and they are answering Absolutely. questions, that community in there. I'm like, holy cow, that was, I'm learning. I'm like, I can't even comprehend some of them. I'm like, you know who I'm talking about. Some yeah. of the members in there. Yeah, like, right. Dude, you guys are freaking. thank God for you in this group. Cause it's a basically a no bullshit. I get to talk to, uh, you know, your mecha- you know why mechanics are, are awesome because they have years of experience, right? The private Facebook page is that. It is dudes with exactly all kinds that. of experience yeah. with a lot of years with a lot of different bikes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. And you get it all. And and then Absolutely. no marketing bullshit. Correct. No one's trying to sell you anything. No. Right. They're just, everyone's trying to help each other. I love, that's my favorite. I, it's I, a paid community, which is why it works that way. And the people in there are stellar, but because it's paid, mm-hmm. people it take keeps it seriously. The, yeah, and it the keeps the trolls mm, out. Right. Exactly. Yeah. We've never had a troll in there. If we did, we'd, we don't want your money, but yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's a, it's just a, a wonderful, wonderful community. So that's another way. Mm-hmm. And like Michael said, all the free videos and all that, guys, we really, really appreciate you guys tuning in. And I hope that uh, information, although we've talked about in the past, I don't think we've ever just dialed it in exactly that detailed on what yeah, they do and, right. and, and verify basically again. Right. So there you guys goes. I will tell you this. Um, make sure you get a tool kit for your motorcycle, guys. You should have a tool kit on board at all times. I'm just going to tell you up front, Interesting little tidbit pisses me off. The Hardy Toolkit suck. A and I'm not, just, I'm not just telling you that to promote ours. I just got a brand new Hardy Toolkit in my Milwaukee 8. Came with my police bike. I shit you not, Oscar. I'm so pissed. 
I open it up and I want to tweak my controls because I like them rock back. A brand new bike, I'm like, oh, well, the toolkit surely has the most common used Torx drives in it for Harley, right? T27, T25, which is like most Harley stuff, has two Torx drives that are both way bigger than that. <laughs> it does not include a Torx 27 and a T25. I'm flabbergasted. It, it, I can't what even find out. To, I don't know. And why the fuck, Harley, would you put... Why would you do why that? Why would you put something that I... I don't even know what they go to, Michael. I can't figure it out because they're too big for anything that you the would do on the side of the road. That, yeah, the it's biggest big. one that's on my bike is for my lowers, and it's a 40. I shit you not, guys. And that's the only thing it goes to. Right. That I know of. Yeah, and the, I mean, if you were taking off your battery, there's like a T40, uh, that battery plate. Oh, it, yeah. But anything you're going to do on the side of the road is going to be a T27 it or a T25. You ain't digging in deep. On no. It. Yeah. Seriously, it doesn't have it. It's a shitty toolkit, guys. I'm, I just laughed when I got it out. I couldn't even do that. So I suggest the Cruise Toolkit, guys. That's what I ditched my Harley one. I threw in one of our awesome Cruise Toolkits, the RTH3. Don't get stranded. Get hooked up with the RTH3 Cruise Tools. Rolled up travel toolkit for Harley Davidson, an American-made V-Twin, guys. Why get stranded and have your bike towed over some small, stupid repair that we've already shown you how to fix? Get your toolkit and pull up our YouTube channel. You'll be able to fix it on the side of the road. This quality-made toolkit has everything you need for a roadside emergency repair tested used by the law abiding biker crew yep has our stamp of approval which is why we have it on the shelves in our warehouse get it already the cruise tools rth3 kit that's right lawabidingbiker.com forward slash store nothing but five star reviews and stories of how well that thing worked for guys when they got stranded or had a little problem on the side of the road like last year's trip to reno we had to adjust oscar's clutch we used the cruise tools kit uh partially for that so there you go big daddy kane and greg they run the law abiding bike store have them in stock ready to ship to you right this very minute there you go thanks guys i hope it was useful information just a bunch of bikers here drinking a few voodoo rangers on a sunday afternoon bsing it was good for me buddy it was good for me mm-hmm. michael very good for me as well. You did well, dude, for your first episode. I mean, bro. His initials were MC, dude. I mean, he better do well. Right, dude. He's straight up. Yeah, he I did well. I about that. Uh, yeah, the shit job. I think about. Good job. All right, guys. Hope you're well. And I definitely hope you are out there getting some riding. And peace out. <laughs>